the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Yeah. Every day, dollar, just they get the higher power. Over Naira. See them talk, say, make we off mind. But then go say, my ego don't come. So my people make you loud. Oh, yo, yo, yo. My ego don't come. Oh, yo, yo. My people make we shout. Oh, yo, yo. No one may pass in talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man do they talk. He do they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they tip money in buck. One man picking, they the street, they hawk. Still, them talk, say, make we not talk. But thank God, say, my egun don't come. So my people make you laugh. Like oh, yo, yo, my egun don't come. Oh, yo, yo. Hello there. Aye kuna wa mo, amo dodo dodo. Aye kuna ya ri, aye My name is Nambekano, and the reason why we are here today is to protest the killing of innocent women and children, and men for that matter, all over Nigeria, especially in the northern part of Nigeria. We are not happy, we are not pleased with what is happening, and that is why we are here today. As you can see, there are a lot of Nigerians um, who are protesting about the killing of families, people who are determined to tear the country apart violently, and it is not something that we support, it is not something that we would like to see continue, and we are here today to send a clear message to the Nigerian government, to the High Commissioner, that what is happening in the country is unacceptable, and we cannot accept it. If that continues, it will lead to the violent situation of the country. There will be no more Nigeria for anyone to go to, there will be no Nigeria for anyone to refer to. In fact, what is happening in Somalia today will be like a tea party. So we cannot allow this nonsense to continue, something has to be done. And the consequences of the actions of terrorism in Nigeria must be driven home to the people, so that even the terrorists themselves will be able to understand that there is no mileage in that government. The only thing they can accomplish is the breakup of Nigeria. If they think that they can cower people, if they think they can force people to be, to be coerced into a religion which is not theirs, then they are clearly mistaken. We are asking for peace, we are asking for people to get together, we are asking for everybody who loves Nigeria, who is associated with that country, to please prevail upon terrorism in Nigeria so we can bring it to an end. That is why a multitude of Nigerians are gathered here today. Those of us in the UK are determined to work with the government for peace. We are determined to work with the international community for peace. The one thing we cannot stomach is a repeat of 1966. What is happening today in Nigeria was the reason why Nigeria fought a bitter civil war for three years between 67 and 1970. If this continues, there will be another civil war in Nigeria. And this time around, no place will be safe in Nigeria. This time around, nobody will be safe in Nigeria. So it is imperative that everybody who has the interest of the country at heart acts now and immediately to stop. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. This is Mayegun live. Please share the good Godfather is in me. Godzilla or my my Thank you so much. Remember, read the caption of the broadcast. Read the description as well. Share it as wide as you can. Just before we get started, this is exclusive, as they say. Eh? So, which means that uh, it is going to be a full hour 
of uh, at least bringing everybody up to date on the Mazil Namdekanu's travail in the hands of the ruiners and destroyers of Nigeria. Share it. Facebook. And yes, we like you. Only you too. And yes, we like Tomorrow it's going to be 899 days that they have been keeping Mazi Namdekano yet they have been unable to present one viable evidence of why they are keeping him. They kidnapped him 899 days ago. The news broke. It was a celebratory mood for these criminals and the jihadists, especially the jihadists from northern Nigeria. 899 days, they couldn't even manufacture evidence. Share the broadcast. My there are other stories that we are going to be discussing later tonight as well but this is going to be like a catch-up the story so far share it so good morning to you good afternoon to you and good evening to you from wherever you are watching from it is mayegun and this is live 10 years ago or should we say about 11 years ago now the man that uh, apc Egbe Bokowari and his uh, jihadist gang wanted to use in perpetuating, as in use it as, as an excuse, in perpetuating uh, their intended genocide in eastern part of Nigeria, genocide against the Igbos. Remember when they did that in 1967? to 1970, it was concluded that it was a no winner, no vanquish. Therefore, all the genocidists of that time got compensated, rewarded, while they continued a cold war that has further helped polarized, divided Nigeria and Nigerians today. Eight years ago, Bokowari and gang decided to use Namdekanu's request and demand for referendum where the Igbos will be given an opportunity to decide if they still want to be part of Nigeria or not. And if they want to, under what condition, a democratic demand that if not because you add criminals, jihadists, divisionists in charge of Nigeria who are never interested in any unity, as much as uh, we have now seen, eh, they unleashed the state resources on him, as well as uh, on eastern part of Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are hearing about terrorism and terrorism, at least what will come to mind won't be where? The northern Nigeria, the Sharia North. However, it will surprise you that today in Nigeria, the most militarized part of Nigeria today, is eastern part of Nigeria. Ask those who do travel down there what it is like for them and the illegal 
endless roadblocks put up by different different uh, Nigerian government and security agents. Checking what? This was the creation of uh, Bokowari. And like I said, Unam Dikanu was uh, a perfect, you know, a, a, a perfect excuse to what? To go after the Igbos. He was demanding for referendum. No, he was demanding for war. They changed that. And there are Igbos who agrees with them. That indeed, that's not a bad uh, excuse, right? To kill supposed Nigerians who are of Igbo extraction by using Namdekano's demand. They didn't see it. A lot of them didn't see it. Today, they have also, I mean, they have enabled Bokowari and his gang to further eh, cripple the economy of Eastern Nigeria without any concrete uh, outcome from all those years of a program of killings. So let's go back to 2015. It was uh, peacefully asking for a referendum knowing the kind of uh, criminals that they are dealing with, the danger upon not just the eastern Nigeria, but the entire southern part of Nigeria, they had problems with his uh, use of language, his use of words. Oh, his words are so, so like, uh, you know, cutthroat. His words are so blunt. His words are, his words are so ash. So the leverage on that. He was kidnapped in December 2015. And mean, it was probably an opportunity for those behind that. In fact, those who enabled Bokwari to do that. To see if all the noise was for personal aggrandizement or personal enrichment or an attention to get uh, called to come and share in, the, in their national uh, cake. So he was locked up while they started the state-sponsored killings, kidnappings, which they call arrest, disappearances in Eastern Nigeria. In 2017, for two years, they couldn't present any evidence in their own court. Then somehow, somehow, those behind the whole ordeal, primarily the Igbo politicians, and I'm going to show you some of them, because Bokwari didn't act alone. All the killings that took place in Eastern Nigeria, the ones that the, I mean, the criminal politicians themselves put together as unknown gunmen, harmed them, funded them, and protected them, right? Eh? Bokuari did not commit this genocide alone. By the way, it was enabled by the politicians led by Devulumayi. They promised Devuluma, who was a governor at the time, as a governor, he knew the security problems of uh, his own state, Ebony. And in fact, since uh, the eastern part of Nigeria shared the same proximity, so close enough to know what is going on elsewhere, even in Anambra, they had to force a I mean, Obaino, they had to force him to appoint one of the Amiyeti Allah as commissioner, I mean, as, as an advisor, so as to at least curtail the insecurity at the time. So, Unamdikanu was screaming about that, but for political exigencies at the time, Igbo presidency, Igbo presidency, Unamdikanu's position was not good for them. Maybe you didn't know that. Maybe you now know that. Obviously, the damage has been done, hasn't it? Yeah? Devuluma, you who knows about all of this and how the Fulani terrorists were ransacking border villages in eastern part of, especially his own state, at a point he actually cried when he visited, visited some uh, part of his state where hundreds of people have been slaughtered by the Fulani terrorist. He cried. But he was promised the presidency. They were hyping him. Do you understand? Oh, Igbo, Buhari will support uh, Igbo president. So if Unam Dikanu continue to demand for this referendum, if he continues to encourage the young people not to participate in their elections or anything and continue to look down and rubbish all these criminal politicians themselves, then Namdikanu is a threat to Igbo presidency. Maybe some of you didn't know that. 
This was the genesis of how IPOB became a threat that even those who are not from Igbo land bought all of the propaganda and the brainwashing. Listen to me. If I give you this context, this was what IPOB practically means. When you see who are those who are the IPOB, indigenous people of Biafra in Nigeria, what do they look like? How do they look like? I mean, what is their gathering like? This is what they are like. That was the, was the regular gathering in eastern part of Nigeria. Unam Dekano controls sizable number of the population of Igbos, both in Igbo land and outside Igbo land, including in diaspora. He had that truthful old on them. They saw something in him. They believed him. Namdekano wasn't a threat to Nigeria. Namdekano, IPOB, they were threats to the Igbo politicians, Igbo elites. It is like one single man without uh, spending a dime could control such grassroots movements and he is not interested in politics. So what did they say? They said, if Unam Dekanu was not stopped, he could raise an army that could get rid of all these criminal politicians in Eastern Nigeria. And that would be a complete no-no. They couldn't fight him. So they started bombarding Bokwari, somebody who was looking for any opportunity anyway. Abi. So they started bombarding him. He must do something. You have to do something. So it became obvious that Bokwari was like, okay, your mouth does not control your people except that Namdekanu, yeah? Okay, I'll deal with that. That was the genesis. So the genesis of why they kept kidnapping him but yet couldn't produce one evidence of any wrongdoing other than he insulted us, he insulted uh, our tribe, he insulted our pastor, he insulted our region, he insulted this or that. So in 2017, the same Igbo politicians came together. For some reasons, there were backlashes so the people that should have probably embraced or listened to them more, even kind of, uh, some of somehow hated them more. They lost control. But if they have to use force, fear, threats, 
to keep the people in control. They don't mind. And that was something Bokwari could provide easily. But somehow, somehow, they were having backlashes from that. Despite all this illegal kidnapping and then uh, incarceration of Nnamdekanu, courts kept saying that he must be freed, he must be released. And they kept disobeying the court. So the politicians came together in 2017, struck a deal, decided to stand shorty, and they made this back end uh, behind the scene arrangement. Nnamdekanu will no longer speak on social media. Unam Dikanu will no longer grant press uh, release. He will no longer speak to the press. Unam Dikanu will no longer be seen in the gathering of more than five people, which means Unam Dikanu can no longer walk around eh, with that massive following and acceptance. Some of them were so surprised. Ask uh, an ordinary Igbo person today, they will tell you, we are a stubborn flock. We are like uh, people who are very, very independent-minded. But for all of us to listen to this guy, that is what this ruling class and elite are missing because of their own selfish and self-centeredness. Why are all the people rich, poor, educated, exposed, in I mean, what do you call it, illiterate and the rest of Why are they all listening to him? What makes him so like that? They are failures. That's it. The failure of the ruling class, not just in Eastern Nigeria, from all over Nigeria, but for the Igbos, their failures makes Namdekanu eh, a sought-after person. It's not hard. So money can control the people. Force, power can control the people. Because sooner or later, they're going to break loose from all those things. Power from them is willingly given. And trust me, eh, the Igbo politicians know this very well. So they struck a deal. How could you say Namdi Kanu cannot, cannot speak on social media? <laughs> Are you serious? How do you mean that he can't speak to the press and all that stuff? So when they released him, on bail from the moment he was released he started breaking the nonsense agreement with bokuari i mean all of you were with i mean you are witnesses aren't you he started breaking everything you can't keep see you cannot enslave a man eh without his own uh, consent do you know that today's slavery Eh, is purely psychological. A lot of you today have been enslaved psychologically, and in that uh, psychology is hidden fear, the fear of unknown. What's going to happen to me if I try to go against that? Oh my God. Would I be able to like uh, withstand what will happen? No, that thing. He started breaking their law. I mean, their agreement, not their law, their agreement. Then they've had enough. So they called a meeting in Enugu. And at that meeting, they expected Dunam Dekano to possibly say, okay, what do you have to offer me? I can go away. The naysayers, the, 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 the useless social media pundits, he's looking for money. It's because they are donating money for, to him. It's because he's making money, millions of this or that. I mean, he's controlling every kind of... Uh, you can say this, so I don't care how you feel. Oh. You can say Unam Dikanu controls eh? a bottomless, a bottomlessly rich empire. Being the, the leader of the IPOB. I mean, they have their members scattered across over 156 countries and they are present in every state village in today's nigeria do you understand that what that means because it's here it's not by those flags that you see you know they are, they are kind of uh, dedication and loyalty 
So which kind of like literally makes him rich? Well, the guy still lives in his flat in London. His family still lives their regular lives. Eh? He's still pretty much like your regular person, which simply means eh, he was not all about how much money he can make for himself. Which he could easily, I mean, these people will easily give him their money. Easily, willingly. Right? They want their money to him. So the criminal politicians in Nigeria expected that. Probably disappointed. They came out of a meeting in Enugu where Nam Dekanu was talking about, listen, we have suffered enough and we should all stop pretending. And with the way this whole place is going, if all of you don't begin to actually do something like we have uh, the highest uh, youth migration in Nigeria, and these are the vibrant, productive uh, young people that could be so, so useful in Eastern Nigeria, if all of you had invested in Eastern Nigeria, invest in, uh, I mean, sorry, invest in uh, uh, healthcare, invest in uh, education, invest in uh, infrastructure, build a seaport for, for our people. Yeah, you know, all those things that are like normal, normal demands. Oh, and then the Eastern Nigeria needs an autonomy. And we need the political will to push that. All of them be politicians. Eh? The Eastern Nigeria needs security autonomy. All of this insecurity and the report that all of you have on your desk, that you seem so powerless. You have power. You can do this, do that. We need to protect our people. Our people are vulnerable. When they came out of that meeting, this was what Devulumayi said within Namdekanu. 2017. I think, was it a week or two weeks after that? Eh? They sent the military to his house to kill him once and for all. Just end this whole thing once and for all. Then he escaped. This guy wasn't a threat to Nigeria. He is not a threat to Nigeria or to anybody in Nigeria. He is a threat to the Igbo politicians and elites. Okay? Who are indeed against, genuine, I mean, genuinely against the economic liberation of the people of Eastern Nigeria. And they are not different from their counterparts in other parts of Nigeria, but we'll come to that. He never threatened anybody. He made a demand that these people would rather kill him for. Watch this. Your Excellency, our very dear host, the Governor of Edinburgh State, Right Honorable Ubuani. Your Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Anambra State, representing the Governor of Anambra State, our brother Dr. Ken. The other two governors outside the country and the agencies are very dear brother and the leader of Ipo Prince Nam the Kano. Our fathers, our father, one of our fathers, the neighborland, Professor Ben Wapes the SAN, our brother again. Evangelist Elliot Boko and the press. This is a communique 
resulting from our meeting today with the leader of IPO. So, communicate of the Southeast Governance Forum issued today, 30th August 2017, in Enugu. The Southeast Governors, today, the 30th of August 2017, met with the leader of IPO Place, Nam De Kano, together with Professor Ben Mwabese, SA, and Evangelist Elliot Spoker. The meeting deliberated on a number of demands of IPO and noted their concerns accordingly. However, the meeting agreed that these demands by IPO should not be absolute. Rather, the Southeast Governor shall immediately engage the leader of IPO, Prince Nam De Kano, and the entire leadership of IPO to further meetings and dialogue with a view to quickening the resolutions of all issues amicably. And we also request from all concerns to give the Southeast Government. They said they were going to take all of uh, those communique and all of that stuff to the to Bokuari. Then, a month or so later, they send the military to kill him. That day, officially, it was recorded that they killed 28 young people at Afarauku in Abia that day. Hmm? Well, miraculously, he escaped and disappeared. So a lot of people were worried. Was he killed? Did they take his body away? Then two years later, Mazel Namdekanu resurfaced in Israel. Alive. Oh, the fact that he's alive was such a big relief to so many people, millions of people all over the world. Okay. That's a good start then. That means, uh, you know, he's alive. When Unam Dekanu came back, I mean, I as a person who has been like uh, following him and his activities at least for the past 10 years, I, Mayegu, I saw that change. He was no longer vitriolic. It was more like inclusive it was meeting either online or physically it was meeting with other people other groups from other part of nigeria explaining to them that you see what we are pushing for everyone should be pushing for it right now nigeria is not even in the hands of the alleged nigerians it's in the hands of smaller minute number of people, groups, criminals, who don't give a damn if we all die. He became a changed person in a different way. Namdekano started, the, he set up a Radio Biafra, Ausa. He started addressing the Ausa communities. He started speaking directly to them. And before you know it, he started having his own uh, fans in northern Nigeria who started understanding it. Then we woke up uh, in 2021, and it was uh, the news of his uh, arrest. How? Arrest where? What happened? How could that even happen? He was arrested in Kenya. No. Based on what? If he was arrested in Kenya, he cannot. He can't possibly be in Nigeria. Kenya is not a jungle. They probably has a government. And if somebody is a foreign national and accused of any crime that they have to arrest or whatever, then their own system must keep record of that, including their policemen and their courts. There must be documentation of his arrest and all of that before he ended up in Nigeria. No, he wasn't arrested. He was kidnapped. 
They were hunting for him. Apart from the propaganda they were funding and spending in Nigeria, and also the ongoing killing and hunting of the young Igbos in eastern part of Nigeria, in the name of IPOB, a lot of them were disappearing in those two years. No, no joke. You offered Kenya what? That they had to do a secret operation? What evidence did you give to them? So we later heard that Malamu in Nigeria told Kenya and other African countries who were ready to play balls. We'll give you something if you can get us to Namdekanu. We heard that it does come around. And who told them that Namdekanu does go to Africa? Ladies and gentlemen, it is Sasari Dokubo. Well, he confessed to it. That is why, in case if you don't remember, Asari Dokubo confessed to that. In fact, Unam Dekanu once also mentioned how he met, uh, not himself, but his delegation met with Asari Dokubo in Bene Republic, which their conversation led to, because that was when Asari Day appeared to be a Biafra on social media. For some of you who remember those years, okay? He was then presenting himself as Biafra, right? He met with uh, uh, Unam Dekanu said delegation in Bene Republic, which facilitated the payment of certain amount of uh, millions of naira to Asari Dokubo. So, definitely, somebody told them he does go to Africa. And therefore, they began to spread their drag dragnet and offering people, offering countries. A lot of things that, again, mm -hmm, will remain... I mean, we remain as a speculation. So we don't know what they offered Kenya, but there is no record of uh, Unam Dekanu's arrest in Kenya. He was kidnapped. When he was kidnapped, they said he was in Kenya. That was what Malamu told them. Oh. He was, if they see him, oh, Unam Dekanu was in Kenya to meet with El Shabab. El Shabab is like Boko Haram of the East Africa, of that part of Kenya, the way Nigeria, Ninja Republic, Chad, Cameroon, uh, and all these places are suffering the atrocities or terrorism of a Boko Haram and other, and other Arams like that. In the Kenya, El Shabaab is their own dreaded terror group. Malamu told them that Namdekanu was in Kenya to meet El Shabaab to plan a terrorist attack in Kenya and Nigeria. So the Kenya secret police, who already has a record that Namdekanu was in Kenya, he, within a week of Namdekanu uh, stay in Kenya, eh, he even visited their hospital to get himself checked. There was a record of that, which means he was publicly available. He wasn't meeting anybody secretly. Then they said, a friend, who also came to Kenya was to be picked up at the airport. Unam Dikanu still drove with people who wanted to go and pick his friend up at the airport. That was where the Kenya secret police swooped on them. And immediately they identified him, Unam Dikanu, they grabbed him. Remember, he is a terror accomplice, according to Malamu in Nigeria. So Kenya police kept Unam Dikanu for one week. They chained him to the floor. They were torturing him just to tell them what uh, his connection is with uh, El Shabab. After two, three days, they realized that this guy has no connection with any terror, whatever. It was a complete fake intelligence. Just the same way they are sharing fake intelligence in Nigeria, bombing innocent people and coming back to call it a mistake. But according to them, like I said, we don't know what they promised Kenya government. Under Uhuru Kenyatta, Uhuru Kenyatta's government agreed with a Nigerian government where they now facilitated the private jets. They said, we can't let you go. They said, well, now that you don't have anything on me, can you please let me go? They said, the policeman, that's why he told his lawyer, Unam Dikanu himself, oh. he said, one of these guys said, ah, sorry, we can't let you go. We just have to keep you until Nigeria will come and collect you because we have no case again. We have nothing to hold you for. And they organized the private jet from Nigeria. 
that that flew to Kenya, take the name the canoe where they put hood. I mean, they put a black hood on his head, right? They covered his head. They they, they tied his hand, tied his leg. Then they drugged him and dumped him in that private jet straight to Abuja. Immediately, it la I mean, they landed in Abuja. Malamu was so happy. He was so happy that he had to give a press conference in Awusa because Unamdekanu is like a trophy. There are those jihadists up north who they have told that the Igbos ate them so much and Unamdekanu is uh, the trophy that will punish the Igbos that the Awusas, Fulanis, they are not their mates. Attorney General of Nigeria gave a press release arresting the leader of uh, the indigenous people of a region, the second, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, what, sorry, the, one of the biggest and the largest ethnic groups in Nigeria. And he gave the press conference in Awusa. This might be annoying. I just want, to, want it to be on record, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Television, radio, the Kuma Bukioi, Rayuka and Uma Parahula, Rayuka and Uma, the Sipahata, the Sojoji, the Abuad and the Kidayuka, the Nakala, the Kidanasaba, the Aikin Kaki, Aki the Hasara Rayuka, Aikin Jani Ansaro, the Kuma Aikin Halaka, Bukioi, the Kuma Aikin Ura and Ayuka, North and Nan Jani Ansaro, the Kuma Duan Abu the Kidanasaba. I it's a long clip so there's no point in listening to all that nonsense but for the record that was the attorney general of nigeria giving his uh, press conference in Ausa because he had a, he had an audience he was actually like uh, addressing but with all of that there were no evidence right let me take you a bit back Unam the canada made that request and they ended up having to start haunting him to kill him or just he do you know they just don't want him out there remember it was a devil who my eh, that read the communique who knew the demands so they promised to make him president all right and since unam dikanu has gone uh, missing and they were preparing eh, at least for what do you what will you call it 2023 the same devil publicly said what are the demands of ipob we don't know their demands remember this so it's time for us to rise up we know these people that in houses, that in the forest, 
give us information. SSG and the security consultant, they have to provide a secure number where we advertise for people to give information. You can block your number and give information there. And every information we leads to arrest of any killer, we have a reward, cash reward, and secret reward of not less than two million. Nobody is going to review your identity. Just tell us where the killers are that have refused to accept this amnesty. I'm told the other day, lawyers who went to case in the lot are coming back to all again, were murdered. What was their offense? Nothing. Security people imported from outside to help us were murdered. Their offense? Nothing. We can't continue with this. People have been asking us to intervene on the case of our brother Nam de Carlo. Yes, the governor has been intervening. But we don't have the power to release it. But the iPod people should make the case easy for us. When iPod started, they started with agitation. Can we know those agitations? Apart from agitating for Biafra, we will not lose our wealth scattered all over the country. Let us know the agitation for marginalization. If you trust Ohanese, allow them. We will make way for them to go to the center and renegotiate. If you trust the governors, National Assembly, or CAR, we throw up this challenge. But we can't do that in the midst of confusion. High Court says we are not the one in charge of killing. They are basically hijacked and they need to redeem themselves. I will put it forward for them to disband together with ESF. Allow the governors to take the challenge.